Hello and welcome to another AIC video. About two and a half years ago, I posted a video about how I think that the Lenovo ThinkPad X270 is one of the best ThinkPads made, in my humble opinion. Uh, some of those reasons uh, include upgradability, usability, serviceability, and just the overall features and functions of the system. Uh, before I go any further, this skin is one I bought off of eBay. Uh, you can do custom pictures. This is from one of my favorite animes. Uh, I will link to that in the video description down below. If you have a ThinkPad, totally worth getting this skin for. Uh, keeps it looking nice under the vinyl skin for a long time. Anyways, so my feelings really haven't changed much in the last two and a half years. This is still one of my favorite laptops I've owned. Uh, I've actually owned like three of them over the years for different reasons. Uh, you can buy it and just with a few screws, I've already taken it apart just for speed reasons. Uh, eight screws, remove the battery. It does have an external battery that you can swap out. So you have the bridge battery. Once you have it open, you have your internal battery, your memory. You upgrade your, or re, uh, solder your, um, keeps calling it solder, re-thermal paste your CPU, uh, upgrade your RAM, Wi-Fi card, uh, lots of replacement, easy to replace parts in here. You can also replace the uh, keyboard without much effort on here as well. So that, that just being very serviceable with lots of serviceable parts, um, you can see the hinges are really stout on this laptop and it just is a well-built machine. Your storage is here with easy upgradability and access. All right, so we've got to put it back together and power it on. So the next thing about this laptop that I love is the screen. Uh, it's a nice, bright screen. Not the brightest on the market, especially by today's standards, but still pretty bright. It's a full HD screen, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, other than if this was a um, 16 by 10, it being a 16 by nine, I wouldn't want a higher resolution than that personally because it is a 12 and a half inch screen. Those pixels start to get pretty darn small and the icons start to get pretty darn small. So I think this is an appropriate resolution for today's websites and things like that. Uh, any lower of a resolution, like if you get a 1366 by 768, I find that uh, a lot of websites are not designed to fit on that screen very well anymore. And so this feels very modern when browsing and surfing the internet watch movies, things like that. Uh, the other thing about this laptop that I love is the ports that are available. We have our fingerprint reader here on the uh, palm rest. On the right-hand side, we have our headphone microphone combo, a USB type A, full-size SD card reader right there. Uh, you have your port for the, oh, <laughs> uh, this is for your um, your cellular card, if you have that. I don't, obviously I didn't have that uh, in there, though you can add it pretty easily. Your RJ45, so you have your Ethernet, Kensington for those who use it. On the left side machine, you have your square plug. So that's one of the things I love about this. You can use the very durable square plug that's easily replaced if you ever break it by accident you have your cooling you have your usb type c which you can charge off of as well uh, it does have power delivery and display port over that type c we have an hd a full-size hdmi port and another usb type a so you get basically three usb ports um, one video out you're charging your multimedia in with your uh, SD card reader so lots of ports that I still actively use on a regular basis on this machine uh, so and I love the bridge battery on here I have a couple of spare batteries that fit this machine and so I can run it a full day only ever having to swap out that battery when I need to as far as performance go we'll go ahead and run um, a benchmark here well, I talk about performance a little bit and some other things about the system. Performance-wise, it's okay. Uh, it's got a 7th Gen Core i7. Uh, definitely not the fastest CPU on the planet, even when it was first released. 
it's just got two cores four threads now if you post on the thinkpad subreddit and you say anything about uh two cores and four threads being sufficient you'll get absolutely ripped to shreds they uh, they are all about the four cores and honestly for 99 percent of what people do on a computer watching youtube going on social media checking your email streaming videos on netflix or whatever it is more than sufficient for all of that and you can do lots of it in the background and i think that most people with modern laptops if you put two side by side one with a, a modern generation cpu and one of this vintage that most people would have a really hard time telling you much of a difference between the two honestly especially if they weren't using them side by side if they were using them maybe back to back or something or use one minute and then use the other one people would be really hard to to tell you that there's much of a difference at all things like even pay, playing back uh, raw 4k or um, blu-ray video on here it does it without issue no hiccups no qualms at all uh, obviously if you have a specific use case such as running multiple vms video encoding anything to do with the graphics uh, obviously this would not be sufficient uh, but i think most people out there this would be a sufficiently performing machine for them um so, but and, and if you have one of those specific needs, you're not going to be shopping a thin and light notebook anyways. You're going to be shopping a more powerful workstation machine. So, where has this really kind of slipped for me in the past uh, couple of years uh, as it has gotten older as far as it being something I would I use today? Because I do have another ThinkPad I am using more. Uh, and there's a few things one is the speakers they've never been very good especially this generation and older thinkpads for whatever reason they put terrible speakers in these things and i don't know why uh maybe because they expect people just to not care about um using audio on these maybe they expect you if you're going to to wear headphones or have it plugged into a docking station or whatever but so much of our world now is webcam calls media on youtube i use uh, youtube constantly to learn new things about how to do my job better and so having that audio quality is, is important to me and these speakers are pretty terrible uh, speaking of that webcam it also is pretty bad i actually used this today for a call and it was bad enough that somebody actually commented and said you look worse than you normally do referring to the quality of my webcam and so it's uh it's just one of those things where you know it definitely th they, they have improved webcams on modern laptops still aren't great but some of them are a lot better <laughs> than this one the keyboard could be a little bit better and it might just be that my laptop is older and i have used it a ton and it was definitely uh used before me uh, and so it could be that my keyboard just getting a little bit worn out but they also made uh, an improvement to the keyboards. My P14S Gen 2 definitely has uh, a firmer feel to the keyboard. And this one's a little bit softer. Still a great keyboard, still better than most competitors. Uh, but, you know, it's not the traditional seven row. It's not even the seven row of the uh, T25 that I had. Um, and it's not quite as good as my P14S Gen 2. So that definitely feels a little bit uh, behind. Another issue that I am running into is with a 7th Gen Core i7, it is not Windows 11 compatible. A lot of the stuff that I use on a daily basis are Windows-based applications. I am currently working to move away from Windows entirely on my personal machines, moving towards Linux. Um, and by doing so with this, I do think that it will have a long life ahead of it. I really don't want to have the modern Linux, or excuse me, modern Windows uh, operating systems on my computer. So 
that is something I'm going to be working towards. And graphics performance. Uh, obviously, in integrated graphics, it was never meant to be a gaming machine. It is not a gaming machine. I don't even try to game on this system. Uh, but Intel, on their more modern CPUs with their Iris graphics, has really had to step up and compete with AMD on their uh, APUs. Uh, and so this one definitely feels further behind than uh, current uh, GPUs, integrated GPUs. It, it, it hurts to have that big of a difference uh, between them. It does support DirectX 12 instructions, which is great for support. Like you'll be able to run applications that require DirectX 12. Uh, but as you can see in this test, we're getting pretty low uh, FPS on here. Uh, the FPS is what 11.3 and of course it penalizes it because it can't run at the resolution it wants it to uh, so it's a penalized 4.56 frames per second that's pretty awful um, definitely not not great now some people have had an issue with theirs that I simply haven't had and that's because uh, they pick it up by the corner I'm guessing something similar to this and this chassis is not as rigid as other ThinkPads. And so when you pick it up by the corner, it can cause the system to bow or flex. And the RAM slots are right about here, I think. And so it causes that to become desoldered. And so it causes the computer to no longer function or to function only if you put pressure on it in a weird way uh, or to blue screen when you go to pick it up, things like that. Again, I haven't had that problem. I think mostly because I'm in the habit because I have so many laptops and a lot of them are bigger laptops, I tend to pick up here along the edges. And so that's more support to the system, I believe. I might be wrong on that. I haven't had the problem that other people have complained about. So I'm just speculating as to why that might be. So um, that's just the thought I had on that. Uh, again, some people have had that problem, I haven't. So I can't really speak to it personally. If you're looking for one of these, uh, I would absolutely not buy one with anything less than the IPS Full HD screen. There are other screen options out there and they are terrible. And replacement screens run 50 to $100 plus. And so you're not going to want to spend the money on the laptop and then go out and spend money more money on a replacement screen. Uh, that's just one of those things that um, it just, they're, they're, I'm amazed that Lenovo was able to get away with, with such terrible screens in their, you know, mainstream workstation systems for so long. This was not a budget system when it was released. But lastly, the biggest problem I have with an X2270 uh, today is really availability. I went and looked on eBay and there was only one available with the 1080 screen and the Core i7 7th Gen. One available on eBay when I was looking. There were, I think, three with a 6th Gen Core i7, which performance between the two is negligible at best, and a handful with a Core i5. There were a few more without the full HD screen, but it just, uh, I wouldn't buy one of those personally, period. Unless you get it for nearly free because you're going to want to almost immediately go out and upgrade the screen. So that's my thoughts of using an X270 today. Uh, I still think it's a great laptop. I think that uh, they're very underrated as a whole uh, in the Lenovo ThinkPad lineup. Uh, you go on, like I said, onto the ThinkPad or subreddit, and everybody tells you to get an X or you know, a T480 or an X280 or t580 whatever or newer and there is some justification with that as far as windows 11 support but if you're not running windows 11 or if you don't have a very specific use case that requires significantly more cpu power or gpu i think something like this if you're looking for a thin and light notebook to take with you i have done a lot of traveling this summer and this has gone in my bag every time because it's going to get the job done i've looked up train ticket time or train departure times i bought train tickets on here uh, bought pizza on here uh 
looked up maps, looked up activities to do with my family, uh, watched our movies through our Amazon account plugged into the uh, TVs at Airbnb. Like it's just, it, it was my do it all for the vacation. Now I wasn't trying to encode video. I wasn't trying to play AAA video games on here, which I think, again, most people don't do those things on a laptop. Most people check their email, check social media, respond to some emails, stream Netflix or YouTube, you know, and this laptop is still perfectly functional for that. So if you are willing to move to Linux in a year and a half when it loses Windows 10 support, buy one, uh, if you can find one. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing day.